Good evening and welcome back YouTube and God bless all who have found this video. I hope the Lord is blessing you and your loved ones. I hope he's keeping you all healthy and happy in these contentious times. In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you why I do not believe in free will. I'm going to read you some scriptures and talk a little bit about them. So let's get started. For the scriptures say that the Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. And thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Then he says, everyone who is called by my name and whom I have created from my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. He created these people to give him glory. As the scriptures also say, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? Those whom he formed and those whom he created, like Jesus Christ, he sent his only begotten Son into the world so that the world would be saved by believing through him. His Son was the sacrifice the sacrificial lamb. So the man had no choice in what he came here to do. His life here was here for a purpose. He was created for a purpose, to glorify God here on earth, basically fulfill God's promise to Moses. Even Jesus himself said, I did not come down from heaven to do my own will, but I came down to do the will of him who sent me, and that he wasn't seeking his own will. He told you that what he spoke, he was commanded to speak. He did not speak on his own authority. So he is doing what he was created for. So let's look at Rebecca and Isaac's twin boys, Jacob and Esau. For Paul writes concerning them, and he said, Not only this, but there was Rebecca also when she had conceived twins by one man, our father Isaac. For though the twins were not yet born and had not done anything good or bad in order that God's purpose, according to his choice, might stand, not because of works, but because of him who calls, not by anything that they can do or earn, but it was by his purpose and his choice. For he said, the older will serve the younger. And just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. So before these two boys were even born, God had already decided who he was going to love and who he was going to hate. And Paul continues and says, what shall we say then? There is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So I think about that verse and it says, again, he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, not what you want, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. For this reason, I raised you up for this purpose. I put you in this position so that I could bring all these plagues upon your country and demonstrate to the world my power and my wrath. He hardened Pharaoh so that Pharaoh would not let Moses go. He hardened him so that God's will or his purpose could be established in, through that man. Because let's be honest, if God hadn't hardened him after the first two or three plagues, he would have let Moses and the people go. But everything had to go the way that God proposed it to go. And we could use Moses as an example also. It entered his mind at the age of 40 to return to his people. The Lord put that on him to return to his people so that God could make him king and make them their leader and their, their, basically their savior. He brought them up out of Egypt. He was serving God's purpose. He was created for that purpose. He killed an Egyptian and he buried the man's body and, tried, and he hid it. 
Think about uh, King David. How many men did he kill? And he coveted a man's wife, sent that man off to war in the front line of his army to die so that he could take that woman for himself. He coveted another man's wife. How about uh, Judah? He slept with his daughter-in-law, thinking she was a temple prostitute while being a married man. These men, it didn't matter what they did in their life, they were already chosen before they were born. They committed sins just like every other man. It has nothing to do with us. It has, it's God's mercy. It depends on whom he has mercy. As also David said, blessed is the man that God does not impute sin. Let's continue. So then Paul says, he has mercy on whom he desires and he hardens whom he desires. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault for who resists his will? Right? If he created them for that purpose and that's what he wanted them to do, who's going to, res who's going to resist him? For it says, all the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. But he does according to his will in the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And no one can ward off his hand or say to him, what hast thou done? No one's going to say to him, what have you done? But on the contrary, who are you, O man, who answers back to God? The thing molded will not say to the molder, why did you make me like this, will it? Who are we as men to question God? Who are we to answer back to God? Indeed, does not the potter have a right over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for common use? So what if God, willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? Prepared for destruction. And he did so in order that he might make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory. Even us, he says, whom he also called, not among Jews only, but also from among Gentiles. So what if God, willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath that he prepared for destruction? So that verse makes me think of Judas. When Jesus dipped the morsel at the table and he handed it to Judas, he told Satan, go into him and do what you do quickly. It wasn't by Judas's free will that he betrayed Jesus. It was written long before the man was even born that he would do so. Peter spoke of that. He was a vessel prepared for destruction because we're nothing. As I just read you, it said, all the inhabitants of heaven and earth are accounted as nothing, but he does his will in all those hosts. We are nothing before him. When Jesus was on the cross before he died, he prayed to his father and he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. All those that divided up his garments and those that crucified him, they were all created for that purpose. Every moment in their life and every action that they made had a reaction to lead them up to that moment. Just as me sitting here and teaching. I was called. He revealed himself to me when I was not looking for him. The mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. For Paul says concerning preaching, If I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for I am under compulsion. Compulsion means you're being forced to do something against your will. Woe is, for, is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this voluntarily, I have a reward, but against my will. I have a stewardship entrusted to me. And Jesus said to the disciples, You did not choose me, but I chose you, 
and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You did not choose me, he said, but I chose you and appointed you. And his father David said, How blessed is the man that you choose and cause to approach thee, that he might dwell in thy courts. How blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach thee. It's like being born again. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Moses didn't repent before the Lord gave him the spirit, nor did David. It is a calling. It isn't by anything you want or you will or you attempt. You can't buy it. I chose you. You did not choose me, he said. This is where the TV preachers have everybody messed up. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. As Ephesians 5.26 says, The Lord cleansed us by the washing of water of the word. By these pages and as Peter said you were born again by the living and abiding Word of God by these pages unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man you have no life in you these pages eat them consume them not physically here as it's written receive the word implanted which is able to save your souls. Receive it with humility. If it's not received with humility, you're not receiving it. We're men, we're nothing before God. Instruments for his will and his purpose. God can do no evil. So he created Satan to do what he does and all the evil spirits. If you've ever read the book of Job, Satan had to be allowed to be to, to, to attack Job. He had to get permission or he had to be allowed. The Lord had to allow him to do it. I've done shorts on some of these too. Some of the spirits before the Lord that he sent out to be deceiving spirits in the mouth of prophets. He even tells you he causes these prophets to lie and do the things that they do. It's all an understanding. And the foundation has to be built properly. If one stone is out of place, then the whole thing's crooked. It's the same thing with biblical teachings. As Paul said, clean out the old leaven so that you be made new. Get rid of the old teachings. Be washed by the word and born again. Because we're not born again by anything that we want or we ask for. For the Lord says, For I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, he says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you. There's that word again, cause. I will cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. I will cause you and I will put my spirit within you. It is by the spirit that we are caused to do these things. And Jesus warned us and said, Therefore I say to you, Any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven men, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. Because it is the Spirit by the power of the Spirit that these men did the things that they did. As he says in another verse, Truly I say to you, all sins shall be forgiven the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. 
and it is because they were saying, he has an, an unclean spirit. They were saying that they were doing these things by an unclean spirit. And they do the same today with those who teach by the scriptures. So they did not choose him. They were caused to approach him. He anoints them. They were foreknown before the foundation of the world. They were predestined. Born again by the will of God, not by the will of flesh or the will of man, but of God. Men that he put into the world and at the proper time taps them on the shoulder and calls them in for duty. Washes them, cleanses them, changes them into something new and uses them for his purpose. It is through the spirit that the deep things of God are revealed. So if someone is revealing the deep things of God to you and you're telling them they're doing it by an evil spirit, that is blasphemy. You know not what you do. Just like the false prophets. They know not what they do. They were created for this purpose. We recognize them by the scriptures. Because it says this word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And you can judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart by it. If you know it well, you can test the spirits and know whether or not they are from God. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the spirit without measure. This is how we know the children of God and the children of devil the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. They know not what they do. In their hearts, they think they're doing a good thing. In their hearts, they think they're earning salvation and they think they're saving other people. But that's not how it works. God chooses that. The scriptures tell you no man by any means can redeem his brother or give God a ransom for him, for the redemption of his soul is costly. And it also says to not place your trust in princes or in the son of man in whom there is no hope. Even Jesus himself, being a son of man, told us that the word he spoke was not his, but his who sent him. He spoke again what he was commanded. He did not speak on his own authority. He spoke by the power of the Holy Spirit. God communicates through the Holy Spirit. And that spirit dwells in the men that God chooses. Those men who are born again, who are sealed. They are caused to do his will. No man should boast before God, but by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. And what did John say? A man can receive nothing unless it is given to him from above. That's why I'm not going to ask you to follow me. Follow the scriptures. Follow the words. Let the words wash you. Let them cleanse your spirit and renew you. It is the only way. He said, Is not my word like fire? Like a hammer that crushes the rock. These words burn. They can judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And they're the only way that we make it into the kingdom. And Jesus said, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it any more. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes, he said, 
he will make him a pillar in the temple of his God. For the anxious longing of the creation awaits eagerly the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption, into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. And the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. And it's also written, We love him because he first loved us. To those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And to whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. And he has made us to be a kingdom priest to his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He made us to be a kingdom priest to his God and Father, it says. So he said, I will put a new spirit in, within you, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. And it is by his doing that we are in Christ, by him causing us to be born again. He made us to be a kingdom priest to his God and Father. Made. Predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. These are God's plural that Jesus spoke of children of the Most High. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, who dwells on Mount Zion. I and the children, he says, whom the Lord has given me, these are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. This is why I don't believe in free will, and I don't believe anyone is here by chance. Every trial and tribulation that we go through here is a learning process. You learn by suffering, just as Christ also did. He learned obedience by the things he suffered, and it is the same here. Tighten up your walk. Smooth out your path. Straighten your foundation. And blessings will pour upon you. You'll be persecuted, though. When you start showing the truth, they'll start telling you you've got a demon or a devil. you got an evil spirit working in you. Hold to the word. Don't even trust in your own heart. Don't lean on flesh and blood. As he said, don't make it your arm. You're cursed if you do. Look for your answers in the pages. Not on YouTube or on some false prophet's page that's created for their purpose. He is causing them to do these things. When you see them, it just reinforces your faith. When you're persecuted, he told you that you would be hated by all. And woe to you if everyone spoke well of you. Expect to be disliked. The men of old in these pages, the way Hollywood portrays them on the TV screen and the showmen behind the podiums talk about them, they don't ever talk about the married couple that dropped dead at Peter's feet for lying to the spirit. They don't show that stuff in the movies. They don't show 
Alicia, Elijah's student, cursing a bunch of boys for teasing him for being bald, and a bunch of bears come out and devour them, rip them to shreds, curse them. They don't show that stuff. We are caused to walk in his statutes, born again by the will of God, called for his purpose. Jesus did not glorify himself to the position of high priest. He was appointed king. He received all authority from his father and his God. It is the Lord of hosts whom you should regard as holy. He shall be your fear and he shall be your dread. Then he shall become a sanctuary. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's how you're washed and renewed and born again. And Jesus said, my father is greater than I.